Well, I go hiking for lots of reasons, one of which is to see the beauty around me, the vistas. Well, how do I do that? How do you do that? When we look around and say that we see, we're using our eyeballs. The eye is an amazing organ. There's a little tiny lens inside your eyeball, and it's only one part of the whole seeing experience here, but the eyeball gathers the light, and then the lens focuses the light to an image point. The binoculars do the same thing, except there's multiple lenses in here, and it focuses the image in such a way that the image is magnified. Well, binoculars and your eyeball, these are simply two examples of a type of lens called a converging lens. Now, converging lenses bend the light towards a single point. You can see this very clearly in the use of a magnifying glass. Well, we have all the pieces now. We have an understanding of the three-ray construction, and we have a means of interpreting what the results of that construction will be. So, let's get to it. We're going to take four examples, and we're going to construct a ray diagram and interpret it in its entirety. Now, there's no math involved, but this is a way of allowing us to predict the outcome and set us up for doing quantitative analysis, which means do the mathematics. Now, the mathematics aren't going to be handled here. We're going to do physical math examples when we get to the office hours. All right, well, let's begin. We've got, in this case, an object that is outside the focal point. Now, we've already put the object outside the center, so we're going to put it just inside the center and outside the focal point. Let's begin by drawing our first line. Now, our first line is always parallel to the principal axis towards the lens. Now is the time when we ask ourselves, what type of lens do we have? Well, this is a converging lens, which means it will take this ray and bend it towards the principal axis. That means the refracted ray will extend through this focal point. So there we go. So there's our refracted ray. Our second ray is a ray from the top of the object right through the center of curvature. So we're going to set up our ruler, or meter stick here rather, and zip this line straight through the center of curvature. And our third ray will be a ray from the top of the object through the other focal point, and that's going to be this one. So it'll extend from the top of the object through the focal point to the lens and then it will bend it towards the principal axis in a parallel nature. So here's our image. And I think it's really easy to see that where these lines intersect is where our image is going to be. There's our image. Now we can interpret our diagram. Well, we see that these are the incident rays and the front of the lens is defined by the side that the incident rays are on. So that makes this a positive DO. Now we see that the image is on the back of the lens. So if we go to the back for information, we see that a positive image distance will describe our, the location of our image. Now we look at this lens and we see that this lens has a shape that's biconvex. And that means that it is a converging lens that has a positive focal length. Now also, we recognize that the radiuses of curvature are going to be described by R1 and R2. So we write down a positive F and we look at our radiuses of curvature. Well, R1 is described by the first surface. And the first surface is of this orientation. So the radius of curvature will be on the back of the lens. Now that means that the center is in the back. That will give us a positive R1. And here's a picture of what we're seeing. Center of curvature, incident light. 
Now the other side of the lens, the center is on the same side as the incident light. And therefore we will have a negative R2 because the center of curvature is in the front. So we're going to have a positive R1 and a negative R2. Well, that takes care of the location of the image. Now for the magnification. Well, I can see that the image is inverted. So it's upside down, which means a negative magnification. And I can see that my image is greater than in my object, so I would anticipate a magnification greater than one. And my overall assessment of my image here is going to be a real inverted larger than object image. Now the cool part here is that this is a, an image where the real light rays intersect. And what that means is that I should be able to show or demonstrate this happening. Now that's only because we've got real light rays intersecting. So let me clean up this place and we'll set up the demonstration.